let's pretend you have a website and that website sells tickets to events. All of a sudden, Elon Musk tweets about one of your events. Suddenly, thousands of users storm your website. Auto scaling kicks in, DevOps is losing their mind, but there's nothing you could do. It's too late, the site is going down. Your users see an ugly 501 page and your business is utterly humiliated. Well, you wish you could have prevented this before it happened. And there are lots of ways to do that. But today, in this episode, we're going to be discussing caching. So, in order to enable caching in your development environment, all you have to do is run Rails dev cache. See, it restarts the server every time it's run. And if we run it again, Rails dev cache, boom, back on. Let's take a look at the project I've set up before we dive in. This project has three main models, events, artists, and venues. Events belong to artists and venues. Events also have a very special enum called Featured. This allows us to flag events as Featured for logged in or Featured for logged out users. Next up we have the Home Controller. This has one action, the Index action, which gives us events based on whether you're logged in or not. Then those events are rendered and that calls the events partial and inside the events partial we render artists and venues in their own little partials as well. So this is what the logged in view looks like and this is what the logged out view looks like. Cool beans. So product comes to us with a request. They want to cache all of the logged out featured events but not cache all the logged in featured events. Now let's go and implement this. So first what we're going to do is cache if the current user is nil. So if no one's logged in, we can just cache this whole segment. We're going to add a cache key of public events and just make sure to version that so we can change it if we need to. Now we can see once we refresh the logged out view, you can see a couple queries at the top there. And you can see that it has written to the cache. You can see at the top it tried to read the cache. If we refresh that page, we can see that it's cached it correctly and there are zero SQL queries. And it just reads from the fragment. That's it. We're not quite finished. I think we could still make a few more optimizations. So what we can do is we can cache the events themselves and then we can also cache inside the event partial. This is called Russian doll caching and we're going to be caching the artists and venues as well. This comes with a small caveat. If the artist gets updated, it will continue to be cached and in the brief, product has asked us to only cache the logged out view, not the logged in view. So let's take a look right here. You can see the name of the artist here is Mr. Brooks. Now let's go into the console and update that. Cool. So we can see the artist for that event. Its name is Mr. Brooks. And let's just update that to something else. And once we're done with this update, you're going to see on the front end that the name has not updated no matter how many times we refresh it's always going to be Mr. Brooks. Well, until that cache clears. So we need a way of busting that cache. So when we update the artist, let's think about this. We've got a cache above the artist, which is caching the event. We need to update the events every time we update an artist. We only need to update one thing, which is the updated at attribute. So what we're going to do here is add an after save event to the artist which will update the updated at attribute of the events. So this first query that we're writing is a bit inefficient. It's just gonna loop through each of the events that the artist uh, has many of and touch it. So the touch method just updates the updated at. So you'll see now when we update the artist that each of the events related to that artist gets updated. So artist.update and you can see all of the events there. Big problem, that's a one plus, n plus one query. So what we can do is just run update all and manually update that updated event, I mean updated at for each of those events. So let's run artist.update and 
test cache and you can see just one query. Great, so now if we refresh, you can see that the name has changed. Fantastic, now we have test cache there. So that I'm pretty happy with. Product asked us to cache the logged out view. You can see we've changed the fragments so it didn't cache the first time, but if we reload again, there you go. Super cached, no queries. Uh, there's, if product wants to change anything, they're gonna have to ask the development team to do it because this is cached for a very long time. So what we can do, we can add one more thing. We just add an expires at so the cache refreshes periodically. So if they do change something, it does show up. But I would, I would say maybe change it every couple hours. It depends on your product team and what their actual requirements are. But in this case, we can just do 10 seconds and we can show that in 10 seconds, the query is gonna be made and the cache is gonna be busted. So there's a few ways, there you go, you can see the cache was busted on the logged out view, and there we go, that's caching. Uh, guys, this was my first YouTube video. I don't know how I've done, I don't know if I did a great job. Um, I'd love some constructive feedback. I'm looking to start this. I've got a couple hours off to work every day, so I thought, why not try and make a YouTube channel? I'd love some support, some likes and follows, all that good stuff. But yeah, have a great one and I'll check you in the next one. Peace out.